All right, so it's been a few years since uh, Caddx FPV has released an analog FPV camera. Obviously, they've been working on Waxnail and digital for the last few years. The last Rattel was this one here, the Rattel 2. This is the Rattel Pro. Obviously, it looks quite a bit different. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, you can check the links uh, in the description, but uh, the highlights here for the differences between the two cameras. Um, this one, I think, came out like two and a half years ago. Uh, this one, let's see, so the Rotel Pro has a metal case now instead of plastic. Obviously has a different lens here, so different field of view, 125 degrees field of view on the Rotel Pro. The Rotel 2 has a 165 degree field of view. The, um, the sensor is the same size, 1 over 1.8 inches. Uh, same 4x3 and 16x9 switchable, PAL and NTSC. The low light rating is much more on the Rattel Pro. It's uh, 0 0.00001, so four zeros. Much uh, lower lux rating on the Rattel Pro. So this is more of a, uh, gonna be better in night versus the Rattel 2, which is 0 0.001. So it was still good, at, pretty good in low light and pretty good at night uh, at the time. But uh, the Rattel Pro is gonna be a little bit better there. The uh, TV line rating is 1500 for the Rattel Pro and 1200 for the Rattel 2. And in terms of the weight difference, obviously you can tell that the Rattel Pro is going to be heavier. It's 9.5 grams and the Rattel 2 is 5.9 grams. So obviously with this uh, sticking out quite a bit here with this much longer lens, it's going to kind of limit the kind of frames you can put this in. I had uh, in my testing here for flying, I put it into this frame here. This is the... Uh, we get what is this called? It's from TCMR, TCMMRC, the Martian 3 or something like that. But um, as you can see, this is the original Rattel 1 in here. It still sticks out a little bit. The original camera that was in here was this one here. You can see, even compared to the Rattel 2, if you line up the screw holes, it is uh, shallower. It doesn't stick out as much. I think this one sticks out the least. And then the, the original Rattel sticks out a little bit more, but then, you know, as you can see here on the Rattel Pro, it sticks out uh, quite a bit. So um, unless you don't care about your camera protection or lens breaking, you're going to probably want to be careful as to what kind of frame you put this in. Assuming you're an FPV drone pilot and you're going to be putting it into some sort of a quad or a drone. But I don't think this is the camera that they're targeting for uh, drone pilots. I think it's going to be more for airplane pilots that are flying FPV. So I guess technically you can call that a drone as well. Um, it's just because of the narrow field of view, the 125 degrees is a bit tougher to fly through, especially if you're doing proximity flying. Uh, someone that's experienced like me, not I get used to it. Like I, I can adjust. That's still not the easiest to fly through. You're going to want a wider field of view, obviously, if you're doing a lot of proximity flying or racing, that kind of thing. But for um, airplanes where you're not really flying around objects and you're just kind of doing like maybe like long distance flying or mid-range flying over open areas, the nearer field of view of 125 degrees is probably not going to matter as much. So I think um, that's who they're targeting here for this camera. And of course, you know, with the longer nose, uh, you're probably not going to be as, uh, I guess, worried about what kind of a plane you're going to be putting in because you're probably going to have some sort of custom mount for your planes. There's a lot of variety in planes. But anyway, taking a close look at the rest of the camera here, you know, obviously you have a connector here for your settings and then that's your connector for video and power. Here's a look at the lens. And yeah, I mean, it looks a lot like the Rattel 2, just with a much longer lens and the metal case now for uh, the new lens. All right, I got the camera plugged in here and covering up the lens here so we can see the menu settings. Otherwise, it's not going to be really visible because of the bright light and uh, white lettering. So we have automatic exposure here. Shutter control, gain control. This is pretty much the same as what's on the Rattel 2 white balance, automatic of course, day and night settings, image enhancements, all these are auto. And I flew this with all just stock settings. I didn't change anything. So obviously you have PAL and NTSC. You have uh, four by three and 16 by nine modes. You can also invert and uh, you can flip the image horizontally and vertically. You have a white dynamic range settings and language. And of course you 
can just exit here. So uh, pretty standard and looks pretty much like what you get on the Rattel 2. All right, so in the video here, I'll show you two flights here, a daytime flight and a nighttime flight in the same location. Uh, regarding the nighttime flight, it's uh, super bright in terms of the recording on the, in the DVR and very bright in the goggles, so very easy to fly through. Although the, you have to know that this area is actually quite dark. There's a little bit of ambient lighting from the parking structures or the overhead parking structure but uh, beyond that uh, without you know there's a few lights here and there it's a pretty dark area so much brighter than it actually is in terms of the daytime footage I'd say um, pretty close to what you would get from the Rattel 2 I'll link the Rattel 2 video in the video description you can you know, take a look at that footage and see um, what you think in terms of the image quality, uh, in terms of color reproduction, it seemed pretty close to the Rattel 2 quality. It's just, you know, obviously the biggest difference is the narrow field of view and something to be noted, of, especially if you're a uh, quad pilot or, um, you know, drone pilot, then that's going to probably matter a lot to you. If it doesn't, then, you know, it's a good camera for that. You just have to figure out what kind of frame to put it in. Other than that, um, I'll just leave you with the footage here as it's rolling and let me know what you think in the comments below of the image quality both day and night. That'll do for this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.